Arthur Smith, Steelers Offense Coordinator. The story you didn't know. Arthur Smith is the Pittsburgh Steelers' latest offensive coordinator after being signed earlier in the week to become the team's latest OC. And it will be a crucial year for the Steelers' offense and to see it get sorted out and see growth within the team, while the results will ultimately tell the full story of whether or not Arthur Smith was the right hire for this position to become the Steelers' next offensive coordinator, it's important to know who the team is getting, not only as a coach, but as the person as well. And that is why this video will be broken up into two sections. The first half of the video will be Arthur Smith, the person, his background, his coaching journey, and his personality as a whole. And the second half of the video will be Arthur Smith, the coach, what his philosophy is about, his scheme, and what he values. So let's dive right into it. Arthur Smith, the person. Arthur Smith, he was born in Memphis, Tennessee, in 1982, meaning that by the time the 2024 season starts, he'll be 42 years old. He's the son of Frederick W. Smith. His dad was a Marine who served two tours in Vietnam, but he's best known for being the founder of FedEx, CEO until he stepped down in June of 2022. He has a net worth of around $5 billion, so that might lead some to think that Arthur Smith grew up as a spoiled rich kid. To hear it from those who know him, nothing could be farther from the truth. Every story on him is basically the same. Arthur Smith, he was an incredibly hard worker who worked his way up from a ladder from low man on the totem pole to become an NFL head coach and now to the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive coordinator. So we'll talk more about the Steelers coaching and what he'll bring to the table later on in the video, but supporting the military remains important to Smith because obviously, like I said, his dad served two tours in Vietnam. In 2022 and 2023, Arthur Smith was a Falcons Salute to Service nominee, visiting local military bases and making overseas USO trips. Smith hasn't really talked much about his dad publicly, but he shared with the Atlanta Falcons website in 2021 a little bit more about his father. So, I'm going to read you a quote directly from that interview that he did with the Atlanta Falcons website. Here it is. You talk about relationship and leadership and management. We talk all the time. We talk several times a week. At night, I'm away home from work. Some of the best conversations I think I have all week about life and different issues. But he's been a great father to me. So, it's more that relationship. A lot of it's just observing listening, I think I've been exposed to a lot of things growing up that weren't normal, but you didn't know any different, so I've been very fortunate in that regard. End quote. So, Arthur Smith, he moved to Baltimore area in high school, and he actually played on his high school football team over there. He was a multi-sport athlete in high school and also played lacrosse, basketball, track and field, and in college, he became an offensive lineman for the North Carolina Tar Heels. And it's actually quite interesting, because over there in North Carolina with the Tar Heels, he was actually teammates with future Steelers Super Bowl winning running back, Willie Parker. Neither played really much with the North Carolina Tar Heels, because Arthur Smith, he was slated to have a role on the team, but in back-to-back -back seasons, he suffered foot injuries in 2002 and 2003, and that kind of derailed his career, his playing career. He started against Syracuse in 2002 before getting hurt and essentially didn't play much, if all, after that ever again. So, with injuries taking up most of his playing career, he quickly transitioned into the coaching side of football things. Hired as a grad assistant for North Carolina in 2006, he worked there 
as a video assistant coordinator and helped in the offensive line room. So Arthur Smith made the jump in the NFL quickly in 2007. He was hired by the Washington Redskins as their defense quality control coach. Essentially kind of one of the lowest kind of coaching staffs you could have in terms of positions, but he at least made it to the NFL in a role somewhere. Many people think that this was because of his father's connections, which likely helped out here, getting him a job so quickly in terms of the football coaching aspect, because his father, even though he served two counts in Vietnam, I also said he was a businessman worth around $5 billion, and his father's connections led to him getting this job, I fully believe, and many others do as well because his dad was a minority owner in the team, Washington Redskins. While head coach Joe Gibbs, NASCAR team, Joe Gibbs Racing had a partnership with FedEx. And like I said earlier, his dad is also one of the founders of FedEx. So even Washington Stadium is called FedEx Field. So you can see the relationship between Arthur Smith's dad and the team, which ultimately led to Arthur Smith getting a coaching position really quickly in the NFL. So quality control coaches do whatever is kind of asked of them, be it advanced game planning or special assignments. One of the roles he described that he had on the Washington Redskins team was that he had offensive reports, which he filed on the opposition screen and kind of went over a gadget and trick plays. So Arthur Smith he spent two years in that role with the Washington Redskins, but then it's unclear how he spent 2009 and 2010 in terms of his coaching duties, but he was hired at Ole Miss as an interim and defensive assistant. But that was short-lived because then he got back into coaching at the NFL level in 2011 when he signed with the Tennessee Titans. And this run will go on to lead to future success in his career. Getting hired by the Titans was the best decision that he has made and the best kind of interview that he was done, which led to future success. So he was actually interviewed by Mike Munchak. And this is where I'm going to throw a plug in to a video I made yesterday talking about Mike Munchak and how he would fit with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So go ahead and watch it because this interesting story about the two will lead to that video and it kind of all links together so go ahead and watch it about mike munchak future in coaching and maybe with the steelers next season so back to the video he was interviewed by mike munchak for a coaching job arthur smith he saw the chance to reunite with jerry gray whom he coached with with the washington redskins Munchak gave him the same job that he had in Washington, so he got hired with the Titans. Defensive quality control coach. Like in Washington, he had different projects every week, and he had to represent the team once citing a report on the first and second down tendencies of the team and teams around the NFL. That was described to him about his coaching duties. So he flipped to the offense side of the ball, the following year. After outlining his plan to become a coordinator in the NFL, Munchak remained and recommended that he switch to offense, especially with his background in playing offensive line in college. So here's a quote from Munchak and Arthur Smith that Arthur Smith described at ESPN in 2021. I kind of told Munchak my long-term goals and he thought it'd be a good job for me to move back over to the offensive side of the ball, which I had played in and started out as a GA." End quote. So from there, he moved up the ranks quite quickly. He went from offensive quality control coach in 2012 to assistant offensive line coach in 2013. And then in 2014, he became the assistant's tight end coach. And then midway through 2015, 
he replaced Mike Mulcary to lead that group and the tight end's main coaching coach. And after Mulcary was promoted to interim head coach for the team, Smith remained as a head tight end's coach throughout the 2018 to 2019 season. And then in 2019, he was actually promoted and named the offensive coordinator of the team. So he ran up the realms pretty quickly and he stayed with the Tennessee Titans and that was the best decision for him. All the way from getting hired as one of the lowest ranks of the team in terms of coaching back in 2012 to being the offensive coordinator in 2019. And his philosophy of becoming a tight ends coach despite having an offense line background was precedent. Coaches with that kind of background have been given extra value in recent years throughout the entire NFL. The thought of being there and working kind of every aspect of the offense, being in every single role that you could think of, is great resume work. And tight ends, run blocking, pass blocking, running routes, as a tight ends coach, he has to know the entire offense because the tight ends do everything from working with the offense line to working with the receivers and being basically the quarterback's safety blanket. So they need to know every position and being the coach of that position really does well. We see in Dan Campbell get a job from being the tight ends coach and being a former tight end fullback in the NFL. And now he was with the Detroit Lions who made it almost one round short of the Super Bowl. So you look at Arthur Smith and he eventually became a coordinator. Here's a quote from him about the coordinator spot. To eventually be a coordinator, I thought at least if you're in the tight end room, you can be involved in everything. Kind of get your fits with the line and then the passing game. End quote. So, Arthur Smith, what's especially remarkable about his journey was four different head coaching reigns. The Mike Munchak area in Tennessee, then the Ken Wishunt era in Tennessee, then the Mike Mulcary era, a lot of ex-Steelers coaches here. You can see it. He also worked with Dick LeBeau and Deshaun Townsend, former Steelers cornerback. So then the latest era that he's known for mostly is basically the Mike Vrabel era when he was the offense corner, when he was the head coach. So he basically survived every single turnover you can imagine in terms of the coaching realm throughout the Tennessee Titans. He was there for the firing of basically all those head coaches and the switches to different head coaches. So you could just see how it is through his personality. Every coach that he's had, every head coach, obviously wanted him to still be a part of the coaching staff. Usually when you get different head coaches, they bring in different coordinators, they bring in different coaches to coach different positions, but he was so good that he survived all the turnover and obviously became offense coordinator when Mike Vrabel took over as the head coach. So Mike Vrabel, he actually convinced Smith to stay on board with the team. He was just one of two coaches that Vrabel actually kept from the team when he took over alongside special teams coordinator Craig Alkerman was the other. So he stayed on the team and that paid dividends because future on that led to a head coaching position with the Atlanta Falcons. But first, let me just tell you all why he stayed with the Tennessee Titans throughout it all. So you know Matt LaFleur, he became the Green Bay Packers head coach ahead of the 2019 season. And when he left to become the Green Bay Packers head coach, he actually wanted to take Arthur Smith with him and rip him away from the Tennessee Titans team. But he knew it would be hard to do that and get him away. So it was actually Mulcary, once again, who called Mike Vrabel and urged him immediately to promote Arthur Smith to offense coordinator. Because obviously Mulcary was a former head coach of the Tennessee Titans, but retired in 2020. And that's exactly why Arthur Smith stayed with the Titans and did not go to the Packers. Because Vrabel did just so. He promoted him to offense coordinator. 
and that was a really good, good decision for both the team and all the coaches involved. And everything that describes Arthur Smith, he is described as a tireless worker. And you look at all the success that he had when he was promoted to offense coordinator, averaging 30 plus points, being in top five in offense and running the ball, a top 10 in scoring offense. So it paid dividends for both Rabel, who was a recently hired head coach in his first season, and also Arthur Smith becoming offense coordinator, leading to future jobs in the league. Usually when people talk about Arthur Smith, they always have great things to say about him. So I found some different quotes from different people that actually describe him and some of his characteristics. Former high school coach Dan Pareo described him as a one-speed player who had to be dialed back in practice so he didn't hurt his teammates. Also, Pereiro said he loved the grind. He loved the process. He loved the traditions and everything with it. Also, some other people like John Buntian had some similar conclusions with him saying, you know who his dad is. So he was born with a silver spoon, but he never ever was anything but a hard worker, a gentleman and a tough guy. And also Lafleur, Green Bay's head coach, had great things to say about him as well. He's a grinder. He's going to work his tail off. I can't tell you many times this last year he would be there with us after midnight and he'd be back there at 5 a.m. the next morning. He's incredible. He's intelligent. So those are some different quotes. I have more, but for the timing of this video, I'll just cut it short right there. So in his first game as offense coordinator for the Titans, they blew out the Cleveland Browns. His first game as OC, he put up 43 points. So it was great to see, and the success was immediate. So his success in Tennessee, he led a top 10 scoring offense in both years, and Arthur Smith became the Atlanta Falcons head coach in the 2021 season because of it. His three years there weren't pretty. He finished with a 7-10 record in every single season as the Falcons head coach, and finished 26th in scoring offense twice, 15th as their best. And he was fired recently after losing four of his final five games in a weak NFC South division and after two blow losses to finish the year and one of them yelling at New Orleans Saints head coach at the end of the game, if you remember, because they didn't take a knee. And now he's a Pittsburgh Steelers offensive coordinator. So this is kind of everything you need to know about his coaching journey, what he's been through as a high school player, as a college player, and everything as Arthur Smith as a person from even his dad and his military ties. So that's Arthur Smith as a person. Now let's move over to Arthur Smith, the play caller, the coach. This section of the video is not going to be very long. I covered it briefly when the Steelers actually first hired Arthur Smith, but I'll dive a little bit into his philosophy here and the type of play calling he likes to do. So Arthur Smith, he didn't begin calling plays until becoming the Titans offense coordinator in 2019, but he was heavily involved in the team's game planning for the year prior as the Titans tight ends coach. So like I said, he had great success with the Titans finishing in 10th place, above 10th place in each of his first three seasons with the team. Smith doesn't come directly from the Kyle Shanahan tree, but given he has spent time with LaFleur, you can see kind of the relationship he has with him and kind of the play callings he likes to do. So what does Arthur Smith likes to do? He likes to run the ball and do play action off of it. And that was described by Mulcary, former Tennessee Titans head coach, when talking about him in the media. Here's a quote. He likes to run the ball, which the reason we get along so well is because he's basically running my same offense. He may be using the Kalashana mentality and the floor and whatever the offense is called, but he using what we did and that was beat the tar out of people. End quote. 
So that was described by his former head coach, what his game plan is. And what kind of game plan is that? Well, he runs a kind of wide zone run scheme and he likes to be physical wide zone team. He's not going to run it to the sideline, but he's going to run it in different areas of the field. And you see that throughout the offense. Smith's desire is to be a physical run team. It's a core belief that he has, and he doesn't think he can win without his offense having that trait. No matter the scheme or the call, his group must be physical, tough, and finish the play with great effort and a selfless attitude. So that's something that he preaches and some of a hill that he'll die on. So you look at it and you look at the offense next run and that's what he does. He also runs a duo run scheme as well. It's kind of a wide zone in Smith and that's his bread and butter. But it's not the only thing he runs. He makes sure to point out the need to match his scheme to the personnel that he has and what's kind of going on during the game. And a duo man run blocking scheme is a downhill attack with double teams up front. Kind of the same idea of being physical and tough and winning up front. In this kind of scheme, Smith's goal is to instill confidence in his offense line to make them even better. And duo is a run scheme basically in which double teams are had up front. And that's what led to Derrick Henry's really good kind of season and seasons that he has as the Titans, Titans running back. Another scheme he likes to run is the gap run scheme. That's a physical wide zone and he'll run some stuff in that gap scheme as well. So you look at the formations that he has ran over his career as the Atlanta Falcons and you look at it in 2023 and the rankings, his 12 personnel with one running back and two tight ends ranked first in the NFL and he ran that around 42% of the time. His 22 personnel with two running backs and two tight ends, he was second in the NFL at 10% there. 13 personnel, one running back and three tight ends on the field, ranked third in the NFL with 9% play calling. And 21 personnel, two running backs, one tight end set, ranked fifth in the NFL with a 20% play call ran. And 11 personnel with one running back and one tight end, ranked 32nd in the NFL at 17%. So you really see that he likes to use a big formation and use either multiple tight ends or multiple running backs on the field at a time. So you look at when he just has one running back and one tight end, kind of a lower personnel and more wide receivers, he doesn't really run that a lot. So the Steelers expect them to utilize a really big personnel and more tight ends on the field. So if you are one of a Darnell Washington, Connor Hayward, Pat Frymouth kind of guy, expect them to get a lot of work in the Steelers offense. So that's what he kind of does when he runs the ball. And now look at passing plays. What does he do in the passing game? Well, I described to you that he loves to run the football. So what does that mean? What can you expect an offensive to do in terms of play calling passing plays when they love to run the football? Well, you could expect play action. And that's exactly what he likes to do. Have the quarterback be under center, run the football, and do play action off of it. And Smith, like many coaches around the league, believe that marrying the run game and passing game is to keep the defense off balance. And some of his concept, concepts are based off that. He does a lot of quarterback keepers, bootlegs, rollouts, gadget plays, waggles are among his most popular pass play concepts. So he works off of those with his wide zone run game. And he hasn't really had a great quarterback that he has worked with over his career. You look at the people he's worked with at the quarterback position. He brought Ryan Tannehill back from irrelevancy and he became a good quarterback again in Tennessee. And once he left to become the Atlanta Falcons head coach, he finally fell off a hill once again in terms of his quarterback play. 
So you could assume that Arthur Smith had a big reason for his success when going from Miami to Tennessee to play as a quarterback. Also, you look at the quarterback that he had with Atlanta Falcons, he had a really old and aging Matt Ryan, so that didn't really work out well. And then he had rookie quarterback Desmond Ritter and the guy who came over from Washington, Heineke. So he hasn't really had good quarterback play or a quarterback that he could rely on. And now him coming to the Steelers, he won't have that once again, as he'll have to be working with Kenny Pickett, who just isn't there as of right now in terms of a good quarterback in this league, but he is still growing, so hopefully he could turn him around. So this is what to expect from his philosophy and what Arthur Smith likes to do. I told you I would keep it short because his offense, you can look at it and look at past success and look at all the numbers and stuff like that, but until he actually does it with the Steelers, this is a completely different team. So you don't know if the Steelers are going to run what he ran more in Tennessee in, in terms of the Najee Harris, Derrick Henry type of running back style, or will he do more of what he did with Atlanta Falcons? Who knows? But this is what Arthur Smith is all about in terms of his philosophy and scheme. Run the ball, do whatever it takes to run the ball, run it 30 plus times if you have to, to play action off of that, and kind of allow the quarterback to not do what they do bad. Take away all the negative stuff that you know about what your quarterback can't do and try to make what they do best come to light. And that was the way he does as an offense coordinator and play caller. So Arthur Smith, he'll be 42. He's still a young coach in this league. So he's a lot more time in this league to be had. And Mike Tomlin really loved him and wanted to bring him on board. Apparently, Arthur Smith, he was going to interview with the Pittsburgh Steelers and then go immediately to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to interview with them. But Mike Tomlin made sure that he did not leave the building without signing to become the Steelers' next offense coordinator. He loved him that much. He wanted him to be with the team. And he, that's right. He did not leave the building. He did not go to interview with Tampa Bay. He signed the contract with the Steelers to become our next offense coordinator. So now we'll see what he could bring to the table. Some people love this hiring. Some people hate this hiring. Some people think it's just average. But if he's anything like he was with the Tennessee Titans, you look at him when he was there, he led them to the conference title many times. Not the Super Bowl, but he led them deep in the playoffs. And he did it with not such a good team in terms of quarterback and wide receiver play. So he did it, and hopefully he could do it with the Pittsburgh Steelers and turn around this offense. How much worse can he be? We went from Randy Feigner to Matt Canada to Mike Sullivan and Eddie Faulkner. And now he's the next offense corner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. But this is the story of Arthur Smith. The story you didn't know, both him as a person and as a coach and his philosophy. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below as well. If you like Steers content analysis reports, this is actually my first video like this. So if you like it, make sure you hit the like button, share the video. And like I said, turn notifications, click that bell down below so you never miss out. I post everything Pittsburgh Steelers. News, rumors, highlights, reports, analysis, everything like that. So, I'll see you guys all later. Till next time, I'm out. Peace.